Well, we've discussed today's disruption. Travel expert Jill Starley Granger. Jill, thank you very much for coming in the studio. Mercifully, not flying. It's yes. just as well. Um, first of all, what do you make of this? Because it is not the first time that BA has experienced problems with its IT system. Yes, it's quite surprising that this has happened again. I mean, BA have said it's something completely different. When this happened in 2017, it was a power outage, and they've now installed a backup power supply. However, this was an IT glitch, so there was nothing. There's nothing that they've done to prepare for that and I'm sure they will investigate it thoroughly to find out exactly what happened. Um, the last time this happened, the chief executive Alex Cruz uh, of, the, of AIG vowed, the, the owners of BA, vowed that the airline would take steps to ensure computer system failures never happen again. I mean, it was a brave, some mm. might say foolhardy comment to make. Yes, I mean, their statement is that it's not a full computer system. It was only two little parts, but you can never guarantee that computer system failures won't happen. That does seem quite... Uh, not not a wise statement. And in the end, they went back to manual systems, which at least allowed they could actually get people moving. But I mean, you know, the, I suppose the longer term question is, uh, as we rely more and more on people checking themselves in, checking mm. their baggage in, it happens at Gatwick, for example, now where you put your own labels on all of this, all of this depends on a computer infrastructure that is robust. Yes, I think this just goes to show how humans are constantly being replaced by AI and robots, and it's all the future. But the reality is sometimes Sometimes humans are just better and what you really want when this happens is to have a human you can speak to either at the end of the phone or when you get to the airport providing you with that crucial information trying to log into a system that isn't working is just infuriating and, and, and one of the most infuriating things that was reflected in Lucy's package and in a sense it's surprising with all the effort that's made to improve customer relations that the airlines, and they're not the only part of industry, this, this is true, but particularly the airlines, customer-facing service, service where people are physically all in one place, mm. hasn't seen the benefit of actually having real people there to talk to people in one place. Yes, it is... It is infuriating. However, airline margins are incredibly slim now. And I know that is hard to take when uh, executive yes. <laughs> pay is always incredibly high. But somehow, if you look at the profit margins for airlines, they are very tight. So they do everything they can to claw back money. Um, you do hope that with certain carriers, such as the quality carriers or uh, the, the flagship carriers, mm. that they will have more people. And I think in some ways... Um, surveys I've seen have reflected that. So when this happens with smaller airlines or ones that are maybe seen at the budget end, um, it can be even more frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, it is, of course, infuriating. I mean, there's a question, of course, we, we, which we'll leave for now, whether the airports themselves need to do more since it is in their facility and in their interest Absolutely. for there not to be that those, those pictures on the screen. Yeah. But in terms of compensation, Yes. Um, and I saw a figure saying that if everybody claims what they're entitled to claim, VA uh, could be looking at something like eight million pounds just for today's disruption? Well, BA has said they don't know exactly the number of passengers affected right. yet, but certainly I think it's in the tens of thousands who have been affected. And I would encourage everyone to claim compensation because you are due compensation if your flight has been cancelled or if it's delayed by more than three hours short haul or four hours long haul. Um, and, it's the, and it's deemed to be the airline's fault, which in this case, it almost certainly would be. Um, and you do not need to go through a third party to do this. You don't need to pay anyone it's very simple you go to the civil aviation authority website which is caa.co.uk forward slash passengers and has all the information and tells you what to do so it's actually now a very straightforward process it's straightforward you just essentially send a letter but that doesn't mean that you won't have to chase <laughs> yeah. just tally granger it's never as simple as it looks thank no. you very much <laughs> thank you and we'll find out how this story and many others are covered in tomorrow's front pages at 10, 14, 11, 30.